Guys, this was a normal fat bike, but we put an electric motor on there. It's still fat, but now it's really fast. <laughs> All right, guys, so I just made this fat bike electric, and so far, I'm really liking the way that it came out. Um, just to say a couple things about the build, uh, if you like to ride like all seasons, this is a really good build for you. For stability in general and controlling the power because you know, this is getting with the 52 volt battery, this is getting like what, 1500 watts. I really like having the fat tires to control that power. Guys, if you're thinking about electrifying your bike, whether you have a fat bike like this one or a normal mountain bike or normal bike, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I can give you a lot of reasons, of course, but first and foremost, it is a lot of fun. So this bike actually can go, I'd say, you know, up to about 30 miles per hour. So it's not at that point just for biking, you know, say you want to take it for actual transportation. I can take this bike to work whenever I want to. Um, and you know, it's a great way to actually get out into nature and enjoy your morning while you're going to work. So um, say you're recovering from an injury, right? or maybe you're a little bit older and you're not exactly sure how long you can ride for, you can turn the pedal assist level all the way down to zero with these mid-drive motors. So right now I've got it on zero and you'll see that I'm getting no electricity assisting me. And um, say, you know, my injury starts flaring up a little bit or I start getting tired. Maybe I'm on like a 20 mile run. I pump up the pedal assist level and now I can go home, right? Um, so yeah, that's one of the great advantages if you're not really sure how long you can ride for. Um, as I said, any like sort of trip you want to take or any ride you want to go on and you don't really want to get sweaty, if you just use the throttle like I am right now, you're not going to really show up to your destination looking like a wreck, right? So that's another great advantage. As I mentioned previously, I actually built this bike myself. This was a normal fat bike at one point. And if you are interested, stick around. I'm going to show you guys how I did it. It actually wasn't super hard. And um, yeah, like I said, if you do like to ride, I would definitely recommend it. You know, this really just makes biking a lot more fun. So we just took out the pedals, the crank arms, and the bottom bracket. Now it's time to put in the motor. So this is the drive side here of the bike, and this is where the chain ring is going to go. So we're just going to put it right here, just like that. Now we're going to install the chain ring right here. This is the generic Bafang chain ring that comes with your kit. But today, I'm actually going to be using this Lecky bling ring. This is a 42 tooth bling ring. And I'll be using the, uh, the four millimeter hex right here and the bolts that came with your kit. I've now turned the bike around and I'm going to be installing the motor mounting plate that comes with your kit right here. I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera. The side with teeth need to be on the bottom bracket, facing the bottom bracket this way. So make sure you get that right. So once I screw that in, you'll have the option to either use this, which comes with your kit. This is the outer lock ring, the inner lock ring here. This is gonna go on the threads. And what it does is it secures your motor up to the down tube here. This way, when you're riding around, you know, your motor is not like hitting the ground and stuff. Obviously nobody wants that to happen. Um, I'm personally going to be using the Lucky One Nut though. You can use either, it's optional, but you can get this a little bit tighter on the bottom bracket. And um, it's it, the material is just a little bit stronger, which that's actually what allows you to tighten it all the way. I've now installed the Bafang motor mounting plate. It's time to put on the Lucky One Nut. For this part, you can use the Bafang installation tool here, or if you have one, and this is preferable, a torque wrench. That way you can get it to the right amount of torque. I'll be using the torque wrench, of course. It's really important for this process that, well, first, of course, to secure the one nut on here. But once the one nut is ready to be fully tightened, you want to make sure that your motor is against the down tube. If your motor is just hanging while you start tightening this, it's going to defeat the purpose of this process. It's now time to install the crank arms. Here I have the Bafang crank arms that come with your Bafang kit. These are really good and they work for most people, but you can use Lucky Buzz Bars. A little bit better material. I mean, they're not really necessary, but they do technically fix the Q factor issue that comes with the Bafang kit. And I'll show you, as you can see, the left one is offset from the right one. The reason that is, 
is that if you don't have them offset, your Q factor is gonna be all messed up on the right side. It's gonna be too far out. It's not a big deal though. Most people don't care. It's this if you prefer. We've installed the crank arms. It's now time to put the pedals on. I know it seems really obvious, but make sure you put the right pedal on the right side of the bike, left pedal on the left side of the bike. You're gonna have some issues if you get them switched around. And I forgot to mention, make sure you put your chain back on your bike. Um, it's easier if you do it before you put the crank and pedal back on, but I did it afterwards. It's not a big deal. And um, once the chain's on, you wanna put your bike into the middle gear. You're gonna come around to the back of the bike and look at your chain line. So ideally, you want the chain line to be straight. And that's because if it's not straight, what can happen is you can lose your lowest or your highest gear and you know you probably want those. Um, it's not a huge deal if you have these issues because you can actually fix it pretty easily. Get a couple spacers in there. If that doesn't work, you can also get a, a differently offset chain ring that also works. Real quick, I'm gonna show you guys all the wires that are coming from your controller. So this one here is gonna go to the battery. This one here is gonna go to the speed sensor, optional shift sensor, optional lights, and the main wiring harness. This is the wiring harness. I'm gonna line up the white arrows and plug it in. So as you can see, there is a white arrow on there. There's also a white arrow on here. So here we have the connector for the display. This is for the throttle. This one right here, get it to focus. And then these two, you're gonna hook up these two to the brakes that came with your kit. Um, if you want, you also have the option of hooking these up to hydraulic brake sensors and using the old brakes that came with your bike. I'm just gonna route it up to the front of the bike now. Okay, I've taken off the grips and the left brake. Now I'll be putting on the display. This is the DPC-18 by Bafang. Um, you can put on whatever display you want. It's personal preference. We've got lots of videos on displays as well. So I'm not gonna talk about it right now, but I'll check out the other videos. So the display, I'm gonna put it here, of course, and then the pin pad, it's personal preference, but I'll be putting it on the left side. So I'm gonna slide that on. And this is the throttle, again, personal preference, but I'll be putting it on the left side next to the pin pad. And also, now would be a good time to hook up your brakes that came with your kit. So I showed you guys, these are the two pins that will be connected to the brakes. I'm actually just gonna be connecting brake sensors and keeping my old brakes, but if you guys want, this is when you'll be connecting them. Okay, it's now time to install the battery. Um, I'm gonna be using a shark pack battery, but a triangle pack battery would also work great. This is the cradle for the battery here. It's gonna go right here. And if you don't have these two screws, it's not a huge deal. Um, you can use a triple bob instead, but if you do have them like I do, just go ahead and unscrew them. And then you're gonna put this on and screw them in over these two holes here. Last step is we're gonna set up the speed sensor. It's gonna go on this side of the chain stay and you can actually secure it with zip ties. It has tape on it, but uh, you might wanna use zip ties as well and they can go through the holes here. There's two holes. So it's gonna go on your chain stay. And on the other side, you're going to connect this magnet. Now there's a slot here in the magnet and you're gonna put it on the spoke and screw it in. And you wanna make sure that the magnet lines up with the sensor. You can see there's a target on there. So you want the magnet to line up with the target. 